A number of years ago, Adrian, Theodore, and Cody and I were traveling from Washington, D.C. to Toronto. Now, these three guys were a lot bigger than me. And so, you know, we're at the airport waiting for a flight and we find out that our flight is delayed. So we're doing our best to eat, drink, and be merry and trying to hold on to patience. And after a certain length of time, Adrian's name is called over the intercom. And so he goes up to the, to the desk. He's talking with the person at the desk and he comes back and he's smiling. He's happy. He's eating, drinking, and he's being really merry. What it is, he's been bumped up to business class. So, you know, he's kind of rubbing it in a little bit. And after a few moments in time, my name is called. And so I go up to the desk and I'm also bumped up to business class. Now, Cody and Theodore at this time are a little bit rattled. And so we got on, Adrian and I got on the plane and we're, we're really showing off where we're sitting. And then they're a little bit, you know, a little bit shaking their heads. But Cody is one of the last ones to get on the plane and he brought too much stuff. And you know what happens? The overhead bins are all full. So he has to put his bag under the seat and he has to grunt and groan to get the bag under the seat and half of it is kind of where his feet are and so he's kind of scrunched in there. Now really at that moment in time, Cody is not enjoying his possessions and probably wished he would have brought less on the plane. But you know, we can apply that to our lives. You know, this, you know these readings this Sunday really challenge us in what we have. You know, do we really need what we, we have in our houses? And you know, that's why they've invented spring cleaning because sometimes we need to, we need to purge our, our things. In the gospel reading, you know, there's a gentleman who wants Jesus to settle a dispute. Now, Jesus did not come to earth to settle disputes, to, sh to prove who's right and who's wrong. That's, that's one thing he didn't. But he also didn't come, you know, to, to uh, encourage greed. And, and really, the reason why the gentleman comes to Jesus is because he's being fueled by greed. He wants part of the inheritance. And so Jesus want, is, wants no part of it. And then he shares a parable. Now, the gentleman in the parable, you know, he's not really enjoying what he, what he already has. I mean, he is already wealthy enough. He doesn't have to build bigger barns. So there's a couple things that he forgets. The first thing he forgets is God, which sort of tied in with that is eternal life. Then the other thing is he forgets the poor. You know, part of eating, drinking, and being merry is to give to others because that's to allow others to eat, drink, and be merry, but also giving. In giving, we receive. You know, in giving to others, we receive joy. I mean, it's, it's part, of, part of the goodness of life. And let us not lose, lose sight in that. You know, in the, in the first reading from the book of Ecclesiastes, we might think, wow, the author of, of this text is in a grumpy mood. But really, he's, he's trying to rattle us. And he's rattling us with a very important question. What is the purpose of your life? You know, each of us will answer that somehow differently, although hopefully it's rooted in some aspect of Christ or even the way Christ lived his life. And you know, as Pope Francis gathers with the indigenous peoples to, to bring about peace, healing, and reconciliation, may we as Canadians continue to do the same because we all need to be reconciled with God each and every day. We all need peace and we all need healing. And sometimes the way to do that is to extend that to others. That can become our purpose in life. In, in our lives, we are to center our lives on things above, that is to say, on heaven. And there's two things that I like to focus on that will continue into eternity. The first is love. I mean, that's the obvious thing, which is why I've chosen to have the cross in the background, which is one of the greatest expressions of love for not only us, but all of humanity, but also community. You know, sometimes in our pursuit of possessions, we forget about the value of relationship and our relationships will continue into eternity. And so as we gather around the table, Lord, with others, we see the value of Jesus Christ. Once again, we are able to see the treasure of Jesus Christ and how important Jesus is in our lives to encourage us to center ourselves on Christ, but also to be nourished so that we can, we can be generous, the people in our lives, especially those in great need.